من نمیزا شکه سول و دم لاره امی مکانیک واکم تو ایک زنه فون آسون و ناس فرم لاون کلوم آفریقا Good day! Please, like I've always clamored, please. I know you love what we're doing. Subscribe to my channel. Love it. I beg, like, um, be on my channel. You get the best news. I love you guys. Like, comment, share. Some of you come to my inbox, my DM to comment. Yeah, it's good, but sometimes also comment on this social media. It helps my growth. Like, share, share, please. It's very important you share. I love you guys. <laughs> Welcome to the FP1, FP2 Brazilian GP2023. Now, the thing is this. From what the pundits are saying from Sky Sports, they are now thinking about why F1 are not changing the sprint format. Likewise, they are challenging F1 to also think about it. And remember, there was a video after the US Grand Prix that I made and I talked about this thing. That You cannot just keep using an old law when you have a lot of new things you are bringing into the game. You are just stifling the race. You are making it difficult for these drivers. Not for the team. Teams should be penalized, not the drivers. For what happened in the US Grand Prix. So I don't know how they think it is perfect for them to punish drivers. Cruel after the pain they've gone through. Now, you have FP1, FP2, FP3 to get your car in shape. And you broke the rules. I think it's that time that they can penalize the drivers. Because they had over three hours to set up their car. So the drivers should be pushing the engineer. That, no, this, that, this is what I'm feeling. And that rule, the last time it caught the driver was about... 20 or 30 years ago look at it now in a sprint race which means f1 had not looked at the sprint race to say oh this is a format that we brought to make it interesting why not change the format and change the rule to it but i think they think for themselves and the teams are agree with them with because it doesn't make sense but now they are thinking of changing the sprint format maybe it should go back to when they started in 2021 after the qualifying the cars will now go into park for me that's what they are thinking now because it doesn't make sense after one hour of setup then the cars go into park for me for qualifying so now they are thinking after the fp1 the sprint qualifying then the sprint race on saturday morning then they qualify so after the sprint race then they go into park for me or after the qualifying they're going to park for me which makes more sense so it could be fp1 sprint qualifying sprint race then qualifying or fp1 qualifying sprint race sprint qualifying sprint race then park for me so anyone that makes sense not that after no other practices then the car's just going to park for me it is something that i believe will not work now they are seeing it as unacceptable i believe it's unacceptable before so why are they just seeing it now you guys need to start paying me for my brains because you guys are not using yours well i don't talk much on that but it is derogatory to the sport when you change formats or you change structures you need to improve on the rules or the laws backing it up to make it more interesting and to bring it to the modern day so to that let's move to aston martin aston martin has gone back to their old car upgrade which means the upgrade they brought in in austin didn't really work for them so they've gone back to their normal car the last upgrade they brought so it's better they go back to what they know than sticking to what they don't know <laughs> which makes sense seriously it makes sense because when you stick with what you don't know it is gravy you don't know and most of the races they are going into now the races that are strictly sprint though this will be the last sprint so i think one of the reasons why they are going back to that guy is they only have one practice so after that practice they're going to qualifying so why not just go with what you know and tweak it which makes sense and i said also in the last video that a lot of teams didn't bring upgrades they only brought track space specific upgrades to the car just to make the car suit the track in which they are that is just what the teams have brought to the track to make it more interesting so cheers to brazil they've locked in the brazilian grand prix until 2030 and cheers to the new homeboy Luis Hamilton because brazil is just like his home like Checo was ailed all around mexico last week every corner Luis Hamilton is being ailed he's been cheered you know he's just enjoying his time in brazil so to fp1 fp1 long runs different four runs different tires strategies at the end of the day the two ferraris came up one two with their soft tires and george russell third on medium tires now the mercedes looks quite handy with george russell coming third on the medium tires now the mercedes looks very handy they look very fast on the medium tires but hamilton is still trying to find some time to make sure he get good lap all through the lap he could not get a very good lap in or a banker lap and so also verstappen perez the mclaren got good times on their soft tires but they had to pit because they didn't want to show the true pace of their car i believe alonso struggled they tried to do a lot of tweaks on his car even lance stroll but at the end of the day i think they 
they found the perfect balance for them so we look at what they will do in the qualifying do how they would react to the track how fast their car will be in the qualifying and also there was track evolution so during the qualifying i believe there will be serious track evolution on pole if there's no rain because there's a rain forecast for the qualifying so if there's no rain we should be looking at mercedes or you're looking at mclaren you're looking at ferrari and you're looking at red bull either of the four teams on pole for this race i'm looking at a mercedes win not because they've won the last two races but i think i'm looking at a mercedes win they have a good car and they have a perfect balance car on this track up until the qualifying i tell you what happened in qualifying so meet that yeah let's go so a huge qualifying how huge was this qualifying in the q1 mclarens were flying and flying while verstappen complains about his car jumping like a kangaroo the ferraris were struggling in the first part of the q1 at the end of the q1 there was a scuffle for time drivers really looked for a way to get out of the q1 it was tough for them but so in the long run in q1 Jogo and you, Valtteri Bottas, Logan Sargent, Daniel Ricciardo and Sunoda were all out. Those five drivers were out in Q1. It was quite one of a struggle for them. And the distance of about half a second separates the top 17 in Q1. That's how close Q1 was. And in Q2, even on old tyres, the McLaren were showing pace. They were fast. Especially Lando Norris was setting big times. Huge pace. Wonderful delivery. Which shows the McLaren could be in for it to win it because it was a very very good setup for the McLaren to show how good they could be. I know the funny thing the McLaren came out they showed that they are there while the Red Bulls showed some pretty decent pace but their pace compared to what we are really looking at I'm not sure that they look like a team that can challenge in Brazil it has not been a strong point for them Alonso, Alonso, Alonso the Ferraris, the Ferraris, the Ferraris the Mercedes, the Mercedes, the Mercedes and Lance Stroll, you know what? they were all like 5 tenths again, the top 10 which left Nico Hockenberg Esteban Ocon, Pierre Gasly Kevin Magnussen and Alex Albon out now Q3 the funny thing about the Q3 was this they were like 2 minutes into the rain mercedes came out in old tires mclaren came out in old tires <laughs> Oh god, I don't know how these guys think sometimes. They were predicting 7 minutes but it was just 2 minutes and Max Verstappen came out, set the fastest time and immediately after their first runs, the red flag was called. But sincerely, in Q3 for that qualifying, I think it could have been McLaren or Mercedes on pole. The Red Bull didn't really look a pole car. They struggled but the red flag gave them a beautiful opportunity to start on pole. But how the race pan out, I still feel is a Mercedes win and I see McLaren on pole. Here we have Verstappen, Le Claire and Stroll, the top three, Verstappen taking the pole, Alonso <laughs> fourth, Hamilton fifth, Russell sixth, Norris seventh, Carlos Sainz eighth, Sergio Perez ninth. Sergio Perez was impeded by the yellow flag for Piastri and Piastri tenth. Piastri went out on his first run because I think the rain and he lost the grip from his one tires. But like I said, Brazil has always given us a wonderful qualifying sometimes, and last year was not bad for, for Kevin Magnussen. So here, yeah, from all I saw, I was not really expecting a Red Bull pole position, but they got the pole position. Let's see how the race will pan out on Sunday. But tomorrow, the sprint qualifying, the sprint race. Yeah, let's get to it. So who will win the sprint race? Who will come on pole the sprint qualifying? I see Mercedes, McLaren, one of the two of them just need for pole in sprint qualifying. And for the sprint race, I see a Mercedes winning. So to round up, the rain came down. The grandstand in Interlagos was really torn out. As in the rain really tore it out. You know, when the rain came down, it turned day into night in Interlagos. The weather changed, everything changed. The wind was gusty, tore a lot of things, almost destroyed the grandstand. Some poles were bent, were broken, a lot of things happened. I hope people are safe there and it might probably delay the start of the sprint qualifying tomorrow. We don't know yet. But going to the main race, George Russell had been given two place grid penalty. So he'll be starting P8 instead of P6 because he impeded and it was complained about for that. And I know he won't do that tomorrow. In Mexico, there were calls on that, but he won't do that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, certainly. So, how about the next? Next one until tomorrow. We catch you. I love you. Bye. Chi. Give what gives you power. Give what gives you control. Give what gives you benefits. Are you an individual or business that uses fuel or gas? Use Gibo to find the best prices across all retail outlets in your city. For users and businesses that buy volumes, Gibo gives you access to credit. Gibo also gives you the ability to track your costs and monitor expenses per car or fleet. Need to improve your costs, enjoy incentives, or track expense? Gibo is the answer.
Enjoy 5% discount on your first 5 purchases when you get your next fuel voucher from Gibo. Log on to www.gibo.co to enjoy this. Retail outlets wanted nationwide. I have a new friend in the house. We are in Nigeria, West Africa. He provides internet for us. They provide the best internet around the mainland. And I know they are still moving to the highland and they are moving all around Nigeria. But for you to get internet on the mainland, Contact Firebrad Telecom Limited. They get you sorted out ASAP. The best cable internet on the mainland. Fiber up, I think. They get sorted out. We talk much about them in the course of some of our videos, but contact them. They get sorted out. Teams Gadget is for those of you that cannot easily go to the market to get your phones, your laptops, your accessories. Just put place a call through. His phone number is there. Get you the best. It's your shop plug to get you the best phones, accessories, laptops, games, and other accessories for, for your computer, gaming experience. Contact Teams Gadget and we get them for you.